Well, I'll be damned. I actually found one. Welcome to Five Points of Articulation, where I review action figures and then articulate five points to help you decide if you want to add that figure to your collection. The five points I discuss are packaging, presentation, posability, playability, and price. I'm Jason, and if you enjoy my content, please like, share, subscribe, do all the YouTube rigmarole. Today, we're taking a look at the DC Multiverse Black Adam Sabic Megafig. At least I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce it. Starting off with the packaging, and Sabic comes in a big giant Megafig window box. Name and Black Adam logo down here. Black Adam logo and window up top. Name and logo on the side. UPC for those who want it. And a product shot on the back. Leastways, I'm assuming it's a product shot because of the light and shadow. Either way, it looks good to me. And for packaging, Sabic gets one whole point. Moving on to presentation, and to the top of his scalp, Sabic stands at nine and a quarter inches. First things first, I'm going to admit my ignorance and let you know that I never heard of this character until this movie came out. And since he hasn't appeared in any promotional stuff, I have no idea how accurate this is to the movie. I will say, from what I've googled, he does look pretty close to what he looks like in the comic. Eh, give or take a goatee. The horns are pretty accurate to the comic, though. Interesting how he has pointy ears and Black Adam doesn't. Also seems to have a crown wrapping around the back of his head. We can see his vertebrae are made out of skulls. And they've also done a very nice job on this shoulder piece. Lots of swirly, sculpted detail. It has the very important job of holding these dinglies up. And hey, as long as we're back here, there's some nice painted detail on these belts. And some very nice texture and paint detail on this loincloth. Getting back to the face, and again, while I have no idea how accurate to the movie, it is, it's still a very nicely done sculpt. I will say he has fabulous smoky eye, tiniest of chips in mine. I do appreciate that the eyes are looking forward, and the blue is a nice contrast to all that red and black. And then moving down, of course, the most noteworthy thing about the design is the pentagram. As we can see, this has been carved into his flesh. Looking close, you can still see more lines in his skin, and then you can see some actual runes carved into the length of his arm. Similar to Dr. Fate, and these are very nice and crisp. Sabic has a black wash that gives him a nice sooty look. Overall, the paintwork on this is top notch. And I've got to say the detailing is off the chain. I'll see myself out. For real though, a character like this is absolutely in McFarlane's wheelhouse and they've done a spectacular job. Because of the texture, there's an almost sparkly quality to it. And if you're wondering what the devil's got down there, we see some red shorts, great musculature and texture on the legs. They've actually continued that texture on the inside of the joints, which is very much appreciated. He also has that new style of McFarlane ankle joint, which blends in great. And here we can see his devilish toes. And of course he has a foot peg on underneath. The legal is nicely hidden under the loincloth, and I love how they carved out a space for his butt. Again, I can't stress enough that I know next to nothing about this character or what he's supposed to be like in the movie. All I do know is that as an action figure, he's well sculpted, well detailed, and incredibly well painted. This is one time where the details are in the devil. For a presentation, I'm giving Sabic one whole point. Moving on to posability, and whereas a lot of mega figs are a bit lacking, this one has all the articulation you'd expect from a DC Multiverse figure. As always, his head's in a dumbbell joint. You can look up this much, which isn't bad. It would get a lot more if the hair was a bit more flush. The important thing, though, is that he can really bury the chin. Incredible amount of tilt, and all the way around. Moving on down, and Sabic has swivel hinge shoulders that raise up over 90 degrees, forward and back with a rotator cuff, bicep swivel, buttery smooth double jointed elbows, and those new and improved McFarlane wrist balls that swivel and hinge. Shifting to the torso, and Sabic has a diaphragm joint and a dumbbell waist. He can arch back this far, which is incredible, and he can hunch over this far, which for a DC multiverse isn't half bad. Below the waist, and Sabic has a typical McFarlane hips. They can kick forward this far and do a perfect split. Very good twist at the hip, double jointed knees, toe articulation, and McFarlane ankle balls that swivel, hinge, and pivot. Sabig isn't just well articulated for a mega fig, he's well articulated just by DC Multiverse standards in general. Not only does he have great range, but the joints themselves are very, very smooth. If I had one complaint, it would be that some of the joints, like the diaphragm, are a bit gappy. Does that mean I won't give this devil his due? Not at all. For posability, I'm giving Sabic one whole point. Moving on to playability, and Sabic comes with a trading card and a figure stand. Unlike usual, however, I'm not going to show you what it says. The movie hasn't come out yet, and I don't want to spoil you. Unfortunately, Sabic doesn't come with any other accessories. Not knowing anything about the character, though, and I don't really know what he would come with. At the very least, interchangeable hands would have been nice. He's a demon, so I assume he could have some fire effects. Just for fun, and here's a fireball from Marvel Legends. The box has him surrounded by lightning, but I don't know if that's his 
is are just black atoms, so just in case, here he is with a lightning from the black atom page punchers. And speaking of punching, here he is with a lightning from the endless winter black atom. Of course, a devil needs a throne, so here's the one that came with Lex Luthor. He's got a bit of leg room, but it's not half bad. But playability is more than just accessories from other action figures. It's about how well your figure plays with others. First things first, since he is the man of the hour, here's Sabic with Black Adam. This one's from Endless Winter. And here we have Page Punchers. For the only other Black Adam movie figure we've looked at so far, here's Dr. Fate. And then here's Dr. Fate from Injustice 2. Here we have Constantine. Seeing him out of the box can only mean that the review is coming very soon. But for some other Justice League Dark members, and here we have Etrigan and Zatanna. Of course, it never hurts to throw in a Batman. The nice thing about a character like Sabic is you can slip him into a lot of other displays as a generic devil character. Here we have Thor from Love and Thunder. Here we have the Dark World 2 pack Thor with the Ravager Thor head. Here we have the 80 Years Thor. And here we have Marvel Select. Of course, for the Thor comparison I'm most curious about, here he is with Surtur from Thor Ragnarok. And then for someone who I'm sure would very much like to meet Sabic, here we have Gore the God Butcher. Here we have Doctor Strange from No Way Home and Doctor Strange from Multiverse of Madness. And on the subject of Multiverse of Madness, here we have the Scarlet Witch. And here we have the comic version. For another magic-wielding mutant, and here we have, well, magic. And for a mutant who's a bit demoniacal himself, here we have Nightcrawler. Papa, is that you? For another Marvel mainstay who feels appropriate, here we have Mistress Death. For a character who could maybe kind of sort of work, here we have Sleepwalker. But on the subject of nightmares, for a real deep cut, here he is with Dark Child. Her demonic powers come from nightmares, and she was made by more action collectibles. Jumping to a different universe entirely, and here we have Skelegod from Masters of the Universe Revelation. The horns and blackwash create a nice visual link between the two. For another horny devil, and here we have the Lord of Darkness from Legend. This figure was also made by McFarlane Toys as part of their Movie Maniacs line. Since it feels appropriate, here he is with the Ghostbusters, but for a couple of willing hellhounds, and here he is with the Terror Dog and Terror Sentinel. I like the cut of your jib. And for some larger scale DC multiverse, here we have King Shark, Man Bat, Clayface, Swamp Thing, and Darkseid. For a relative scale comparison, here he is with Pizza Spidey and the Spectacular Spider-Man. And as always, here he is with Stealth Iron Man. On his own, Sabic's a lot of fun, but when you start to mix and match him with accessories from other figures, he's even better. He does suffer, however, for not having any accessories of his own, especially given how much he costs, but that's a conversation for the next category. For playability, I'm giving Sabic one whole point. This leaves us with nothing left to discuss but the price. Seeing as how he's a mega fig, Sabic retails for $39.99. I've been seeing a lot of debate online lately about the price of mega figs and whether or not they're worth it, but when I consider the sculpted detail, the articulation, and especially the painted detail, in this instance, I feel like I got my money's worth. I found this one at a local mom and pop toy store, which means that they are shipping. It also means you don't have to sell your soul to eBay. For price, I'm giving Sabic one whole point for a grand total of five out of five. What can I say? The devil made me do it. For more Black Adam content, check out this video on the new movie version of Dr. Fate, or this versus between Endless Winter Black Adam, or Black Adam from Page Punchers. Are you familiar with Sabic from the comics? And if so, what do you think of this interpretation? Sound off in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back again real soon, but until then, play nice and have fun.